this is Dr. Bev Knox and you are listening to my psychology tutorials learn psychology while you sleep sexuality in perspective why study sex most people are curious about sex particularly because exchanging sexual information is somewhat taboo in our culture so curiosity motivates us to study sex sex is an important force in many people's lives so there are practical reasons for wanting to learn more about it most of us at various times experience some problems or issues with our sexual functioning and wish that we could function better sexual behavior is activity that produces arousal and increases the chance of orgasm sex usually refers to as sexual behavior and autonomy is distinct from gender and gender is usually referred to as being male female or some other gender such as trans historically the main sources of sexual information were religion and beginning in the late 1800s science Important early sex researchers were Sigmund Freud, Havelock Ellis, Richard von Kraft, and Magnus Hirschfeld, all emerging from a rigid Victorian era. By the 1990s, well-conducted sex surveys were available. Today, the mass media, whether through television, magazines, or the internet, carry extensive portrayals of sexuality. The mass media may have an influence through cultivation, agenda setting, and social learning. Studies of various human cultures around the world provide evidence of enormous variations in human sexual behavior. Frequency of intercourse may vary from once a week in some cultures to three or four times a night in others. Attitudes regarding premarital and extramarital sex, masturbation, same gender sexual behavior, and gender roles may considerably differ across cultures. Within the United States, sexual behavior varies with social class and ethnic groups. These great variations provide evidence of the importance of learning and culture in shaping sexual behaviors. Yet, all societies regulate sexual behavior in some way. Studies of sexual behavior in various animal species show that masturbation, mouth genital stimulation, and same gender sexual behavior are by no means limited to humans. In many species, sexual behavior may be used for non-sexual purposes such as expressing dominance. A new international movement focuses on sexual health and the principles of sexual rights. Throughout most of recorded history, at least until about 100 years ago, religion provided most of the information that people had about sexuality. The ancient Greeks openly acknowledged both heterosexuality and homosexuality in their society and explained the existence of the two in a myth in which the original humans were double creatures with twice the normal number of limbs and organs. Some were double males, some were double females, and some were half male and half female female. The gods, fearing the power of these creatures, split them in half, and forever after, each one continued to search for its missing half. Heterosexuals were thought to have resulted from the splitting of the half male, half female. Male homosexuals from the splitting of the double male and female homosexuals from the splitting of the double female. 
It was through this mythology that the ancient Greeks understood sexual orientation and sexual desire. 15th century Christians believed that wet dreams, other known as nocturnal emissions, resulted from intercourse with tiny spiritual creatures. The person who had wet dreams was considered guilty of sodomy as well as witchcraft. Over the centuries, Muslims have believed that sexual intercourse is one of the finest pleasures of life, reflecting the teachings of the great prophet Muhammad. However, the way that the laws of the Quran are carried out greatly varies from country to country. People of different religions hold different understandings of human sexuality and these religious views often have a profound impact. It was against this background of religious understanding of sexuality that the scientific study of sex began in the 19th century, although, of course, religious notions continue to influence our ideas about sexuality. In addition, the groundwork for an understanding of the biological aspects of sexuality had already been laid by the research of physicians and biologists. A major advance in the scientific understanding of the psychological aspects of human sexuality came with the work of Sigmund Freud, the founder of psychiatry and psychoanalysis. It is important to understand and recognize the cultural context in which Freud and other early sex researchers crafted their research and writings. Now let us review the media. In terms of potency of influence, the mass media in America today may play the same role that religion did in previous centuries. American adolescents spent 11 hours per day with some form of mass media. According to the American Time Use Survey, television viewing occupies the most time of all leisure activities at an average of 2.8 hours per day for those between the ages of 15 and 25. An analysis of the 25 television programs most frequently viewed by adolescents, it indicates that in a typical hour of viewing, adolescents were exposed to an average of 17 instances of sexual talk or sexual behavior. References to safer sex, both for STD prevention and pregnancy prevention, are rare. Only 2% of sexual scenes portray any sexual precautions. In short, the average American's view about sexuality are likely to be much more influenced by the mass media than by scientific findings. Communications theorists believe that the media can have three types of influence. The first, called cultivation, refers to the notion that people begin to think that what they see on television and in other media really represents the mainstream of what happens in our culture. For example, college students who watch the soaps are more likely than non-viewing students to overestimate the incidence of divorce. The second influence is agenda setting. News reports select what to report and what to ignore, and within the stories they report, what to emphasize. The third influence is social learning. The connection here is that characters on television, in the movies, or in romance novels may serve as models whom we imitate, perhaps without even realizing it. Research has found, for example, that teens who watch more sexy television engage in first intercourse earlier than those who do not. 
The internet is a powerful mass media influence. Computer and internet use is spreading more rapidly than any previous technology. And 84% of U.S. homes with children have internet access. Exposure to sex on the internet is also rapidly growing. In one study, 28% of male adolescents reported looking at pictures of people having sex at least once a week, compared with 3% for female adolescents. Studies of various human cultures around the world provide evidence of enormous variations in human sexual behavior.